Lansdowne Street in Boston is well known for this kind of show. But just across the street from Fenway Park, dinner and a show has a distinctly southern flavor. There's a lot of southern restaurants, but we're southern hospitality with a southern restaurant and a flair with live music. Just kidding, I'm not bad at Loretta's Last Call celebrates everything country, says General Manager Miles Kopka. I've been in the industry since I was 19. I kind of took hold of this restaurant when I was 26, and I've been here ever since. I love restaurants, I love country, which is great and ties that in very well. The decor is one of many ways Loretta's transports customers from Boston to Nashville. Southern comfort food is the draw here. Our fried chicken is huge. Chicken and waffles is probably one of the top sellers here with our house-made infused barbecue syrup. Other dishes include classic mac and cheese, shrimp jambalaya with peppers, onions, and tomatoes, and country-style ribs with potato salad. Let's do it. Bring it in. Colorful drinks are a specialty at Loretta's. Front porch sweet tea is made with peach moonshine. The watermelon crawl, inspired by the country song of the same name, combines watermelon vodka with lemon and lime juice. Let's just keep on rolling down the road again. And what's a southern restaurant without country music? In addition to hosting weekly live music events, Loretta's partners with booking management company Beeslo Music to host open mic nights once a month. The way that we do it here at Loretta's is it's usually what we call Nashville style or in the round, something very intimate and casual. Loretta's has now really become a staple within the city. I've gone down to Nashville and I wear a Loretta shirt and they're like, oh, we've always wanted to play there. So just to be known that we have a following, not just in Boston, but throughout the country is, is pretty cool. Sometimes dinner and a show are just a few blocks away from each other. Since 1905, Fenway Studios has been home to artists and residents. This is the oldest artist building in the country, as I like to say, designed for artists, built for artists. Printmaker Peter Scott has lived and worked here since 2011. The studio space is really quite light-filled. They have a quaint charm to them. What can I say? Located inside Fenway Studios is Fenway Gallery, open since May of 2022. The nonprofit formed at a time when local artists are struggling to stay afloat, says gallery co director Beverly Skye, an artist herself. It's a huge exodus of artists from Boston because there's no place to work, certainly no place to live. So, this, in a way, was our vision to create a space that would be a tiny little dent in that. Fenway Gallery showcases emerging artists, allowing them to sell their work directly to visitors. What do you like about being a part of this building in this community? We're all volunteers. It feels really important to me to give back to my community in some small way and to create a space, first of all, where I can work, but also where artists in the building and in the neighborhood can show. Gallery co-director Terry Malo also shows her landscapes here. Part of what we're doing with the Fenway Gallery is to reach out to the public as well as to invite artists from outside of the building in the community to come in and do pop-up shows or long-term shows, installations, performance. That's what it's here for, so we want to really foster that. Jim Hoban has been here for this neighborhood since 1998. In fact, El Palon Taqueria is so beloved as a Fenway institution that a customer wrote a song about the restaurant and its Mexican street food. And I've traveled quite a bit to Mexico and I, I you know, came back with such great experiences and the culture, the people, everything. I really enjoyed it. Working in restaurants during his college years inspired Hoban to open an eatery representing the culture of his friends and colleagues. Most of the people who cook food in kitchens around Boston are Hispanic people. So at the time there was no other Mexican street food kind of around and I thought we'd open this up and, and have everybody cook the food they grew up on. One popular menu item is the El Guapo burrito. It's grilled steak but we add sweet plantains to it, fire roasted salsa, delicious. 
Of course, Mexican street food is not complete without tacos of all kinds, chips, guacamole, and salsa. Such classic fare has created quite a following for El Palón. There's all the pictures on the wall of customers who sent us pictures of themselves in an El Palón t-shirt all around the world. This neighborhood's great because we have Fenway Park, we have the museums, there's plenty of great restaurants, there's art, you know, sports, and food. You know, what else could you want? And back to Fenway Gallery, right now it's run entirely by volunteers. Right, and if you're interested in Fenway Studios where that gallery is housed, they're actually going to have a free open house in November where you can visit the artist's gallery spaces and you can purchase some artwork as well. So support the arts. Fair.